And also, his old friend Lapino needed rescuing. Of course, Renato had a pretty strong suspicion that Lapino had betrayed the rebellion. And he had a gut feeling that he needed to use that to his advantage. The island was windswept desert. No one went there except ostriches and ostrich hunters. The Iblis. Every child could sing verses about the Sky Ripper, but ancient codices held hints of other things. A stone that ate souls, a ruby that drank blood, a jewel only a righteous man could give away. Were all these things the Iblis Stone? Long hidden in a buried temple, another ancient item that was only resurfacing now, drawn up from the deeps by the Emperor's horrific rituals, Too late. Cool. Wish I could do that. Dash, thought Renato. <laughs> to use the Iblis stone. It was old, wasn't it? People are so much cleverer now. And Renato was pretty sure he was cleverer than most of them. get past this point. Obviously the temple builders knew how to deal with tomb raiders. This is quite the view, he thought. It reflected no light, 
like a void made solid. Nervous, he picked it up. I can make you mighty. Who said that? It was the stone, eager, thirsty. That seemed tempting and terribly wrong. Zenobia was the Emperor's greatest general and a potent witch. But they had been close once. And he had a sneaking suspicion the gem would try to control him. Why not capture the core of Sky Ripper instead? It was the eye of a lost god torn out by the transcendent Emperor to power his greatest weapon. What's the core? Said the stone anxiously. But even though Renardo knew how evil the gem was, he had a clever plan for dealing with it. The stone bothered him. He hated being told what to do. Wasn't that why he joined the rebellion? Wasn't that why he'd refused to be a soldier? He'd agreed to come on board only if he could freelance. The stone felt a bit clingy, and he had a feeling it did not have his best interests at heart. The sage Calaveras had told him where to find the Sky Ripper, a weapon capable of challenging the gods. Even without its armature, the core would still possess great power. He would go there. He landed the Farfarer. Renardo had a rare feeling of regret. It's not too late, he thought. He could turn around and sail for Zenobia's island. He frowned. Wait a minute. He didn't want to kill Zenobia, did he? Sure, technically she was the enemy, but they'd been at sword food school together. They'd never been lovers, but somehow they'd been closer. She'd told him every secret about herself except the biggest one, that she was the Emperor's daughter. No, no, kill Sylvia, whispered the stone. Deserve to be opened. Almost never saw wild gogglers together like this. The toads had to train them not to peck each other to death. So these had to be imperial gogglers. The stone hadn't lied about what it could do for him. With each raven he cut down, he felt a jolt of power flowing into his arm. You're weak, whispered the stone. The core will kill you. Are you afraid of it? <laughs> no. It chuckled, but, but, but it's unstable. If a poison you so much as carry it, and if you try to use it, it would explode catastrophically. Renardo did not trust rocks that talked in his head. He went onwards.
As he approached the core, the stone became hysterical. He had a sudden vision of plunging his gauntlet into the core and dying in anguish. That wasn't his vision, was it? He had defeated the demonic jam with the power of his mind. Mm, he felt invincible. It was time to attack the Imperial outpost on the Nexus. Take the battle to the enemy. But among the huge crystals, there was also an observatory. A wise man would probably ask the scientists exactly what he had first. Hmm. How wise was he? As the Farfarer... See? He'd trusted his gut, and it had worked out. That's what it meant to be a hero. To ignore the naysayers and the odd makers, and do what you knew was right, and have it turn out to be the right thing. Well, he wasn't worried. Once he got to the observatory, the scientist toads could explain it. Then he could carry the war into the enemy's camp and destroy them all. Oh dear, he was getting a little bloodthirsty, wasn't he? Bernardo had never felt better in his life. Normally, a battle would wear him down and he would need a night's sleep. Now he felt like he could go all night and all day. He felt like people were cheering him on and he could practically hear their applause as he slew one raven after another. The Iblis Stone and the Sky River Core. Two artifacts from the time of legends. Bernardo was becoming a legendary hero, wasn't he? He had enough power to save the rebellion, and he had to understand this power, so he would not misuse it. A cannon trap. Who kept these things loaded anyway? was an engraving. Maximum capacity, 130 people. The toads at the observatory measured the stone with their occult devices. I fed it the core of Sky River, explained Renato. No more fake paper. If the stone doesn't actually feed on souls, claimed a third, 
but on pain of killing another sentient being. If you can truly be at peace with yourself, it would not overload. This was all very confusing. At peace? Yes, the mountains were peaceful and quiet, but he now had the power to turn the tides. He should report to the Rebellion Council and prepare for the decisive battle. Renato couldn't make sense of anything the Toad said, and listening to them argue made him restless. The Iblis Stone had made him a power in his own right. The Core had kicked the Iblis Stone out of his head by filling it with more power than it could eat. It was time to meet the leadership of the Rebellion. It was time to go to the ruins where they had hidden their secret base. He was ready for anything the Ravens could throw at him. His sword felt ready too. It seemed to know what he wanted most. about comics and talk to her son about history and battles and talk to scholars about the ancient tomes hidden deep in the vaults of the library of Ubar. Oh, Renato really missed her. He didn't want to chit-chat, not with anybody. He didn't want to think about Zenobia or Lupino. He just wanted to fight. Another sentient being? What was that toad talking about anyway? He felt no pain, only pleasure, and each filthy raven fell by his sword, and the stone glowed brighter and brighter. And all the while, those voices were cheering him on, like he was in the arena, winning bout after bout. Never saw that coming. Long stairs. So he was close to the rebel base. Nothing was on fire. So far, so good. Am I right?
He slew and slew across the ruins and into the labyrinth that hid the secret rebel base. He was surprised not to see any defenders or even any of the council toads. When he reached the council chambers, there were still no toads, only filthy ravens. Stop him! He's gone mad! One raven shouted until he had hacked them all down. There was not a single toad anywhere. No doubt, they'd all been taken prisoner. So it was up to him to take revenge upon the Imperial fleet. But where had they taken the council? It couldn't be good that the Empire had not only found the secret rebel base, but killed or captured everyone there. No matter. He was on a roll. He headed full speed towards the Imperial fleet. He would be the fox who took down 100 warships. He charged. The Imperial fleet was huge and deadly, but he was deadlier. The crowd was cheering him on. He could practically hear it. Renardo, the hero of the rebellion. Oh, the portal led right into the middle of the fleet. It was a glaring weakness in the defense. Imagine getting a horse up in one of these things. He will be cursing a blue streak. As he slew his way across the fleet, Renata thought he could hear a small voice whispering in his ear. Look at your gauntlet, you idiot, he said. Oh, for heaven's sake, he thought. Can't I be alone in my own head? Look at the stone. I'm busy, he told the voice. I'll talk later. Then it will be too late, cried the voice. Don't be so bloody thick. Piss off, he told the voice and kept up his slaying. Hello. What's up, Argo? Nothing at work? That's dumb. Soon he'd confront the Emperor. Funny that this whole war had come about because the Emperor feared death. And now it was coming for him. There was some sort of blessing there, wasn't there? No, my one dog didn't show XP.
There was the Emperor. Renato cut down his elite guard. The exalted Toad cowered fearfully. He had sought to evade death and only made death come to him faster. Renato savored the moment. And then, too quick, it was over. He stood over the dead. Ellie Emperor. didn't put me on, death so I didn't have Zeri! anything if I wanted Shut it hot. It. Go, Habs, go! Zenobia stepped out of the shadows. You have to stop, she said. You've killed everyone. Our ravens, your rebels. You murdered the whole rebel council. What? Oh, the ravens killed the council. Yeah, big idiot. They don't even know what the secret base is. Shouted Lapino, who was with her for some reason. Look at the stone, said Zenobia. It was black as night. Blacker. But I fed it the core, said Renato. It was glowing. Well, who needs a core, he said, and he attacked. Zenobia conjured her best, and Lapino hopped around like a mad rabbit. But he killed them both easily. I am unstoppable! He orated at the blood-soaked walls. I alone shall be emperor! The tiny voice inside him screamed. That doesn't even sound like you, you big fanny. The stone has stolen your mind. But he ignored it. Who listens to voices in their Holy. heads anyway? Madmen, that's who. Oh, again? But he already had all the secrets he needed. He was sure of that. He must have not used them the right way.